Police released evidence this week in hopes of catching the killer behind the biggest unsolved murder case in New York's history. It's been 10 years since the discovery of the first victims of the Long Island serial killer. Over time, 10 bodies were found near a remote beach. Erin Moriarty shows us what we've learned about the killer for this week's 48 Hours. Missy Can can't forget the late night phone calls she received from her sister, Maureen Brainer Barnes, in the summer of 2007. She called at a train station in New York, from Penn Station. I could hear the commotion from the train station. From the time that she called me, it was poof, she was gone. Investigators tracked Maureen's phone to a cell tower in Long Island. They knew that there was something very, very wrong here. Three years later, in December 2010, human remains were found along Ocean Parkway near Gilgo Beach on Long Island. Dominic Verone, then chief of detectives, was struck by an odd detail. It seemed to be wrapped in, 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 um, in burlap, which didn't make any sense. And the surprises kept coming. I'm, I'm called, and chief, we found another set of remains. They find another one and another one. We were dealing with a serial killer. Eventually, 10 sets of remains were recovered. Missy's sister Maureen and three others were found first and dubbed the Gilgo Four. Discarded in a similar fashion, they were placed roughly 500 feet apart, each wrapped in burlap. I think burlap was selected because its ability to take dampness, moisture, and breathe, uh, which would promote decay, as well as act as camouflage. They shared other striking similarities. But they're all 4 foot 11, very petite, hazel, green eyes. This killer has a type. Right. Today, former FBI agent Geraldine Hart, now police commissioner, is breathing new life in the case. We believe that the belt was handled by the suspect and did not belong to any of the victims. The belt belonged to a large male, says Hart, hoping someone will recognize it and come forward. A very complex case, but I can tell you that we are fully committed to this investigation. What I want most is answers and justice, and I also want that the world to know like my sister mattered. And Aaron Moriarty joins us now. Good morning, Aaron. I can't believe it's been 10 years already. This is such a haunting case. Uh, what else do investigators know about the killer? Well, Anthony, good morning. It is a haunting case, and this is what we do know from investigators. We know that the Gilgo Four were killed, were all four killed by one killer, and that he didn't just drop the bodies off at once. And so investigators believe he is very familiar with Long Island. Um, and here's something really interesting. One of the investigators told me he had to have a cover story, because he's going back, back and forth to the um, Ocean Park where, where he's leaving the bodies so that he may have posed as a private uh, trash collector or a hunter. Yeah. And he also probably was harmless looking, but he has a cruel streak because he called the little sister of one of the victims in yeah. 2009 and told her he had killed her sister. That's right, I remember that story. Why haven't there been any arrests after all these years? Well, Anthony, it's very difficult to identify a serial killer because they're not connected with their, victor, with their victims. But in this case, there was a police chief who took over the department from 2012 to 2015, who inexplicably cut out outside agencies and then engaged in a cover-up to cover his own misdeeds, and that certainly hindered the investigation. All right, Aaron, thank you very much, Aaron Moriarty. You can watch Aaron's report, The Hunt for the Long Island Serial Killer, tomorrow night at 10, 9 central, right here on CBS.